Hello and welcome to another Meet the Coach interview for Season 6 of the GBA. I am Camocast Blue, and today we've got a special treat for you guys. Not only does this guy dominate any league he joins, he dominates Duelist as well. He's also the creator of the critically acclaimed YouTube series, Pacomon. I'm serious. <laughs> if you guys have not seen that, it is... A masterpiece. It's a masterpiece you, of our you, time. You made it sound like it's something serious, you know? <laughs> like, like, oh man, that's just a bunch of chaos put together with subtitles, but I'm glad you enjoy it. <laughs> I appreciate it. He goes by Mega Mogwai. You might know him as Miguel, but no matter what you call him, he is your GBA Season 4 champion and the coach of your Real Morel. Miguel, welcome. They, they also call me uh, Spanish Jackass, Beanie Guy. <laughs> Gaspacho dude, there's there's a lot of uh. A lot I of forgot, terms, but... I forgot Beanie Guy. Yeah. I feel so bad. That's now. that's a classic though. Like, I'm, I I am the Beanie Guy. There's no other Beanie Guy. <laughs> I'm the Beanie Guy. Yeah, everybody who wears beanies on YouTube, it's because of me. Just, <laughs> I inspired them all. But I, yeah, I I'm, believe I'm, that. I'm pumped to be here, man. I'm I'm excited. GBA season six is finally coming and I, I i would assume the hype is over the top because you know people have been waiting for it for a while you know and hopefully hopefully the real Morel can retain its glory you know <laughs> i think everybody's hoping for it so in this first kind of phase we're gonna get to know you a little bit better so sure. my first question and it's a deuce i feel sorry for you <laughs> <laughs> what was your first pokemon experience ever my first Pokemon experience was uh, Pokemon Blue. My brother uh, bought red, I bought blue. I mean, we didn't buy it, we were kids, our parents bought them for us. But yeah, that was that was it, man. I, I remember I uh, moved to the United States, I believe it was the same year that I started playing Pokemon, or maybe a year uh, afterwards I started playing. And uh, that was the first time and I got instantly hooked. My father wasn't too big of a fan, because he, see, it's funny, because uh, parents, uh, you know, at that era, you know, anime wasn't in, like an established thing, yeah. and my father did not understand, you know, Japanese cartoons, he didn't like them, they, they were too weird for his taste, you know, <laughs> like, I used to watch Superman, Batman, all that, and he loved it, you know, he, he, he loved me, he would watch that with me, but with the Pokemon, you know, just... The insane hype that was surrounded by it, it just became everything. Like, you were, if you were in school at that age, everybody would talk about Pokemon. There was nothing else, basically. And, uh, yeah, my father would not like it at all. <laughs> but it became a huge part of my life, man. It, 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 I, it basically defined my, my childhood, really. And, uh, yeah, here I am, 20-something <laughs> years old and still playing the game. <laughs> I think we can all identify a little bit with our parents not really getting it initially. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was definitely one of those kids. The thing about it is that, you know, uh, back then, they, they just, a lot of uh, grown men or grown women did not really understand. Because, uh, you know, anime is really popular now, and a lot of, and it's more... Established in society and all that goodness, and everybody's more familiar with it. But before, you know, my, yeah. it was just like really weird for people, you know, like uh, especially my father and stuff. Like he just didn't, he, he didn't understand their sense of humor because they're very. It's a it's a different society, and obviously their content is going to be different. It's going to be adapted to what they, you know, find funny and and stuff. And uh, now nowadays, you know, it's uh, my father completely gets it and stuff. But it was funny, you know. It's I, I found it interesting to point out, you know, that when I started playing. <laughs> <laughs> my father did not like it. <laughs> he was just like, "What is this? What is that? all these animals? What, what's happening?" You know. <laughs> yeah. So, how long have you been playing competitively then? I haven't been playing competitively for that long, actually. Some people think that I've been this like I've been around since Gen Four. You know, I knew all about <laughs> the DPP meta game and all that, but I I didn't touch. Like, uh, I didn't face somebody else in Pokemon until Generation 6, actually. X and Y kind of brought me back into it, and it, I liked it so much. I enjoyed that game so much that I wanted more. I, I would just beat the game, I would re uh, delete my, you know, my, my uh, save file, and I would just beat it again with different Pokemon, you know. I would always select, like, a, a, a specific team of six, and this would be predetermined. 
You know, like I, I would go into the game knowing exactly what I was gonna catch for my team and stuff. Some people would think that's a boring. Win. I, I enjoyed it. I don't know. I like playing it like that. And uh, but it reached a point in which you know that it just fell shallow. There, there was nothing more. Uh, it, it just it, it became repetitive. No matter how much I loved the game, there wasn't. I needed more, and uh, competitive provided that for me. And that's why I took that step, basically, with X and Y. And it changed my life quite a bit. <laughs> you know, I made a YouTube channel, <laughs> something that I never, I never thought I would do ever. And look at look at me now. You know, <laughs> it's just uh, yeah, it's. It's, but that's when I started, basically, you know, with X and Y, and I got so addicted to the whole competitive aspect of gaming in general that I really got into Pokemon and competitive battling, and, you know, I played, I kept playing and again and again and again until I got decent at it, you know? <laughs> and that's basically I it. gotta say, I'm surprised. I did. I I figured you'd been around for way longer playing competitive that, than that. That's, that's what everybody thinks. It's just that when I obsess over something... I uh, I spent way too many hours on that, so it may seem like I'm a veteran, but it's just because I'm I, I have um, I don't control myself. Basically. Like if I'm into something, I just hours fly by. I'm terrible at managing my time. And yeah, that's just it's part of who I am, though. So I guess I you know, gotta accept it. But yeah, that's I, I, I'm basically I'm good at Pokemon because I played way too much. For, in, a, in a short period of time but yeah people are always like what I thought you were like from gen 4 I thought you've been around since no 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 <laughs> I learned from Shady Penguin <laughs> I learned I learned friends from him I, I, I watched him and I learned the game because of that and then you know I, I continued wow so yeah. we know you're uh, you're very talented in the league format do you have any other format or tier or anything like that you that you play well I mean, it's no secret that uh, I haven't been as active in Pokemon as of late, and it's not because of anything, it's just because I'm, I'm honestly waiting for Sun and Moon mm-hmm. for me to really get interested in standard play, because, uh, you know, when you play AOU for so long and nothing really changed, yeah, they add in one Pokemon here every, like, five months, and hey, you're obviously going to get oversaturated a bit, you know, and it's, it's normal. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, you know, when Sun and Moon comes out, there's a bunch of new Pokemon and just, I don't, I don't know what, what they'll come up with. Like, I, I'm, you, you never know, you know, last time we got the fairy typing, so anything is possible, really. But all new Megas and all that, all that cool ass shit, and my, my spark for it will, will rise again. But as of right now, I don't really play standard. But I used to be really into OU. I would actually do laddering series and such. And I reached top 10 uh, numerous times. But that would be the tier that I would play the most. The thing is, what I enjoy the most about Pokemon, and what, what I believe is, like, I, I think it's a fact, that uh, the most preferred format and the most exciting one, and by far, just overall, just straight up the best, is the League format. It is the number one format in Pokemon, even though, you know, the BGC is a thing. <laughs> League, league format dumps on VGC, like, over and over again. Like, VGC is nothing compared to the league format, and I really wish, you know, Game Freak stumbled upon the, the league format and actually started promoting it and made it official because it's what the vast majority of Pokemon fans enjoy the most. And, like I said, that's a fact. So, yeah, league format is the best thing, and that's where most of my attention towards mods goes anyways. But once the you know the game is released, I'll I'll probably get into OU as well. Yeah, I mean, speaking as someone who plays a lot of VGC and is like relatively high on the ladder, the one thing that always bothers me with the VGC format is you always see the same stuff, and yeah. the league format specifically handles that with the draft. It is beautiful yeah. how it does. It is it's it's so smooth and clean. How they do it, you know, like how Steve came up with this idea, and I'm pretty sure when he came up with it, he not even he, not even him, uh, realized how much potential it had and how perfect it was. Like with the league format, you get you give every single team an identity, and you give them, you give a team an identity, and every single team is unique. Every single team, not only are the Pokemon unique to every single squad, not only that, but the sets that you see. 
you don't see that anywhere else. <laughs> like, th- like I've I've used physically defensive hydragon with roost and toxic and taunt and dark pulse to counter the New Orleans Pelopers sacred fire. You know, Entei. Which, you know, you stop a choice ban on that. And I had nothing for that on my roster, and I thought I was gonna lose to it. And then all of a sudden, I realize I have this Pokemon that is always used offensively as a Scarfer, as a Specs, as a Life Orb Wall Breaker. But then all of a sudden, I start running some cops. And I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> This thing takes nothing. It's like a sacred fire. That's like it's like a scratch. I was like, wow, that it really opens your mind towards competitive play, and you see how much potential each individual mon has when you actually expose them in a format like this. And uh, that's I think that's what's so beautiful about it. I think that's why it's the preferred way of playing mods. I don't want to disrespect BGC lovers. I don't want to. I don't want to put down the format itself. It's just it's not about BGC, you know coming up short or anything like that it's it, it what i want to uh, point out with this is that the league format it's about the, how good the league format is that it can actually be considered much more entertaining than such developed formats as you know standard singles from smogon or vdc 2016 so yeah that's that was my, my point with it basically absolutely so focusing on the draft a little bit here we don't want we don't want to give away too much, but what is your game plan when you're getting ready to draft? Do you look at like utility mons? Do you draft for power? Do you focus on a core and try and get that established? Well, every single time, every single season I draft, I come up with a completely different plan. I always want to uh, spice it up, and uh, you, you don't see me drafting like a similar copy of my previous team. You know, like I always try something completely new. And uh, I don't want to obviously reveal too much because I don't want to have stuff stolen away from me. Even <laughs> though I'll, it'll probably happen anyways, honestly. But I can tell I can tell you guys this: uh, you can expect a much more offensive Riyamo Real this season. Ooh, that sounds terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I'm out for blood. I'm no more. You know, balanced wall cores are nice. You know. But I, I, I want to I wanna go a little bit more offensive. I want to I wanna deal more damage. I want to be more aggressive. Season 6 yeah, sounds like it's going to be a rampage. And <laughs> <laughs> So, speaking of offense, if there was such a Pokemon in this format, is there one that you would draft over and over again because it's just that good and you can't live without it? Does a Pokemon like that exist for you? No. Not a single Pokemon out there would uh, make me draft it all. And that's, like, I, I think that question answers itself when you look at, uh, you know, my, my previous drafts. Uh, there's There hasn't been a single Pokemon that I've kept, because I think every single Pokemon has a lot of uh, uh, very powerful potential. And I don't think there's a single Pokemon that just stands out over everything else. You know what I mean? There are, you know, I did do a top five in the past, and I did claim Mew, for example, as the best. But... In reality, the way I view at it, it's when a draft, with a draft, it's just more important how your team works together than the individual mods that you choose. There's no secret recipe for success in the league format. There's not going to be a single mod that's going to do everything for you. Not even Mew. Not even Mew. Mew, Mew, Mew actually, I, I stumble upon uh, problems with Mew, believe it or not. So, there's nothing really that I, I can say uh, I would always draft this. I, I, I think that's the beauty about the whole thing, you know, like just starting from scratch again every single season and see how, you know, see and trying to, trying to take past knowledge and implement it and be, and be better and do better, you know? Even though, even though I, I didn't win the Season 5 championship, I think, I think I did a good job in the season. I think I was one of the top contenders, and uh, I was potentially one of the favorites to win. I fell short. I honestly uh, underperformed in the playoffs. Uh, I wasn't, you know, I'm not going to make excuses, but it is true that I wasn't mentally 100% uh, on it. And uh, I made some key misplays, and I faced a very well-prepared opponent who really capitalized on that. And, you know, I fell short, but I do feel like my draft was superior. Uh, vastly superior because I've heard people say in season 4 my draft was better and it wasn't it wasn't there was so many uh, I, you can't call a draft better when you only have one stealth rocker and you only have a rapid spinner and uh, it's not the most reliable rapid spinner because Tenacruel can be taken advantage of in this format 
And uh, I have so many flaws. I have so many flaws in that um, my wall core could be could, was very weak. For example, uh, to the Nitto twins and stuff like that. So I had made so many mistakes. But I feel like I played. Uh, I was very passionate, and I was very into it, and I really played to the best of my ability. And you know, it, it turned out well for me in season four. But I feel like my draft in season five was much superior, personally. But I just didn't execute it as well. <laughs> well, I'm sure everyone is definitely looking forward to what you're going to be drafting in season six. <laughs> but moving kind of more into GBA oriented type questions, what made you want okay. to join the GBA? Well. I mean, <laughs> that's actually <laughs> really easy to answer. Uh, when I when I got into this whole YouTube thing and I got into the whole Pokemon community and I started uploading videos and all that, I was a huge fan of the GBA. I I, I, I uh, got led to it through uh, Shady Penguin. I I knew of his existence through him. That's how I found uh, Steve's channel back in the day, and I was I was I was really really into it. And when the uh, you know, as time passed, I made more and more contacts, and I, I met John, my good buddy John. I met Fufu, Frank, all those great people, and they, uh, the, the D-League was announced, and, you know, we all had a shot to get in there, you know, into the league, but we had to fight for it. We had to win our, the round robin and all that, and, uh, I, I actually had to face off against Geo to, to get, to win my group and get into the, the D-League, and I did, uh, and, I uh, you know, Fufu made it. Fufu, by the way, is going to be in the season, which I'm really excited for. I think he's potentially the best player in the league format history. And uh, it's going to be exciting to compete against him. And, you know, everybody got into it. And I was like, I was, I was just very excited to be a part of the whole thing. Like, I never really had to think or decide to be a part of the GBA. Everything just kind of sort of fell into place. And I was loving it. So I, you never saw me complain. So that's basically how it went down for me. So you mentioned a few coaches that yes. we all know about that are uh, pretty well established in the GBA. Do you have a coach you're looking forward to playing most this season? Like I said, I want to square it off with against Sam, and uh, you know, the, the, don't want to don't want to feed that ego too much. But like I said, I do believe that he's the best player in league history uh, and in poke in the league format. And uh, yes, I'm including the GBA and the UCL everything. I think he's the best. And uh, but there's also some very strong players. Who are coming incredibly strong? We got Chip backed, you got Envy. Like, come on, <laughs> this is so stacked, so stacked. And yeah, like, there's there's a lot, there's a lot. Uh, like, George again, John, like, there's so much competition this time around. You know, it's it's either it's kill or be killed, man. It's gonna be nuts. <laughs> gonna be nuts for sure so what about a coach that you're not necessarily looking forward to getting matched up against for whatever reason mm, mm, good question good question let me think let me think i i i i wanna i wanna take this down so that's he can't be it um let's see uh there's, there's a lot of, see there's, there's a lot of people that i just wanna you know, assert dominance <laughs> over, you know what I mean? Like, like be like, hey, I didn't take the title season five. But, you know, season five champion has yet to beat me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I, I'm, I, I, I want to establish, you know, myself as a threat this season. Like, I want to be, it's, it, I don't know, establish that position. Like, uh, get a little bit of respect going on, you know what I mean? Like, have people fear the little water rodent, you know what I mean? The Real Morel, they, they, tremble in their presence you know what i mean so <laughs> yeah i uh there's nobody really that i'm not looking forward to playing honestly like i'm everybody's going to be a tremendous challenge i will potentially hopefully win some i will, I will probably lose some too like the competition is tremendous and i'll just there's not one person that i'm not looking forward to if there was a person that i wasn't looking forward to facing then, you know, it'd be, I, 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 I believe I shouldn't be here. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to everybody, though. But I'm fully aware, like, I, I hope people don't, don't get the wrong idea. You know, I, I like, I like talking shit sometimes. <laughs> it's very fun. It's very fun. But uh, it's no, it's no lie that, uh, you know, co competition is going to be over the roof. And getting a win is, is going to be really hard this season, so... You know, but I I love challenges. I love challenges, and the, the harder the better. So let's go. Nice. I mean, uh, yeah, the competition's definitely there. 
this season for sure. And you are not the first uh, coach that has been interviewed who has said that. And you won't be the last, I am sure. (laughs) Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. So what are you most excited for during season six? Well, uh, I'm excited for people to really... Because what I feel like... what I feel like is going to happen in season six is that we're going to see pretty much the epitome of competitive in league format. You know, people have always there's other there's a lot of leagues out there, but I feel like the amount of just raw talent that we have this season is just really going to lead to some insane games. And I think that people who are a fan of this you know format and people who are a fan of just Wi-Fi battles and stuff, I think they're gonna they're gonna get quite the treat, man, because. So many matchups. Have you thought about George versus Chimpak? Have you thought about Have you thought about Sam versus Envy? Like, like that's just a few. Like, God, I, w- I want my I want a match against Fizz. I've been wanting that for a while. And people want it too. You know, like there's so many. There's so many. Like it's it's gonna be nuts. It's gonna be nuts every week. It's gonna be nuts. It's definitely a good group this season, as you and literally everyone else has said the competition has not been stronger but realistically where do you see yourself ending up at the end of the season i I, i'm not gonna lie i won't be i won't be happy unless i win (laughs) i won't be happy unless i am number one but that's just how i am (laughs) I mean, there's nothing wrong with so, that, and that's not the first time yeah. that's been answered like I don't that. Think, I don't think I should feel better <laughs> saying that, right? <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, definitely easier said than done, right? <laughs> it's Because uh, you got to make it to the playoffs first, and then once you're there, you know, it, it's only the beginning. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it, it's really, it's really going to be, like, the, my approach towards this season is I'm just going to take it week by week. I'm not going to stress too much about it, you know, I'm just going to do the best I can, and, uh, you know, we'll see how things fare out, but people who have lost their faith in Real Murillo, people who say, oh, Miguel's all about duelists now, he don't care about Pokemans or anything, uh, all I'm going to say is, maybe I'm going to, maybe you're in for a surprise, maybe you're in for a surprise, maybe... Maybe I got some plans. <laughs> Maybe I'm not I'm not so absent as you may think. I'm sure there are a lot of people who are ready for that and uh, I hope they based are. on this interview, <laughs> I'm pretty confident you've convinced everybody else who wasn't. So season six, let's go. That's <laughs> that's let's it. go. <laughs> this is the tour. <laughs> what, what are we waiting for? God damn it. <laughs> so moving into this last little section, uh, it's called right. the lightning round. I think is what we're okay. calling it now. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar <laughs> with this. I'm familiar with this. It's yeah. uh, you're faced with two options, A or B, and there's no thinking. It's just answering, and it's going to get us inside the head of the coach of the real Morel. Right. Are you ready? All right, I'm ready. Fantastic. Cartridge or showdown? Showdown. Horus or X Y? X Y. Sweep or stall? Sweep. Hoen or Sino? Oh my god, Sino, come on now, Hoenn sucks. <laughs> You're the first person to give that answer, and I applaud you, sir. My god, are you serious? <laughs> What's wrong with I me? I know, right? Sino, god. god. Just once, I want someone to answer that just once. Live commentary or post-com? Live commentary. Toxic or Will-O-Wisp? Oh. Will-O-Wisp. Volt switch or U-turn? U-turn. Competitive or defiant? The fight. Acro bike or mock bike? Uh, mock bike. Because reasons. <laughs> play competitive or play for fun? Whatever you enjoy, man. I can't, I can't, I mean, me personally, I, honestly, I play for fun. But I play for fun by being competitive. So, <laughs> I, I don't know how to answer that one. That's, that, that's actually a perfect answer. <laughs> go, go me. Technical team or creative team? Technical. But in order to be technical in this format, you gotta be creative. Trade or free agency? None. <laughs> I I am actually. If you ask me, if it was up to me, and some people may think, thank goodness, because Spacho guy is not is not in charge of the GBA. But if it was up to me, free agency and trading would be completely and one hundred percent eradicated. <laughs> Woo! Yes. I, I, I <laughs> think I think it's the most toxic element of the league format. But hey, I'm I'm willing to live with it. <laughs> you you guys, if you draft, if you draft. <laughs> If you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got a little bit, I, I got a little bit of fire lit under my ass right now. <laughs> if you draft a, a team 
You can't go back three weeks later and change something. Like, what? Like, <laughs> bees, bees. Like, have some confidence in your picks. For me, the, a sign of trading and free agency is a sign of weakness as a trainer. And there, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, Bold I'm going to get, get eating, eating alive for that, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a sign of weakness. And finally, the last question, GG or Rage Quit? GG, come on now. It's a game at the end of the day. Everyone, everyone is so sporting. No one said Rage Quit yet. Fine, I'll say it, Rage Quit. <laughs> Fuck you, you beat me. <laughs> uh, Miguel, thank you so much for your time. No problem, dude, it was fun. I know that you're not feeling 100%. You're a little bit under the weather right now. Yeah, but I'm, I'm feeling much better right now. I mean, my, my nose is runny and everything, guys, but I'm, 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 feeling, I'm feeling perfect. It's all good. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. The league appreciates it, and I know the fans definitely appreciate it as well. Guys, go root for your real Morel. All the links you need to cheer them on all season long will be in the description below. Miguel, thanks again. It has been a pleasure. Oh, it's Pleasure to be with mine, man. I, I, I enjoy these things, actually. I enjoy talking, in case you didn't notice. <laughs> uh, 